I'm about to share with you the real reason colon cancer is becoming scarier than ever and give you six simple tips that you can implement right away to maximize your chances of preventing colon cancer. These are the things I'm not just talking about in a video. They're things that I actually do every day. But I'll warn you, it's important to understand all six of these so that you can allow your body to maximize its chances to prevent colon cancer, especially because how many times do we hear stories of someone who said, I did all the healthy things I was supposed to do, but still got colon cancer. But quite frankly, most people still do unhealthy healthy things even when they think they're being healthy. And the best news is that all the things you learn in this video can be done starting today. So make sure you stay until the end because the last one is by far the most important and is the one that 99% of people are not doing, but is actually the easiest thing you can do every single day. Let's start with some indisputable facts. Some types of colon cancers run in families with a distinct genetic component. For the purpose of this video, we'll focus on sporadic colon cancer in which age is a big time risk factor. In fact, the incidence begins to increase significantly between the ages of 40 and 50 and continues to rise as we age. So why are we seeing younger and younger people dying of colon cancer? It has everything to do with what you put in your body. Of course, alcohol, tobacco are both risk factors for colon cancer and they should be avoided. But for this video, I'm gonna focus on the molecules and foods that are leading to colon cancer. Which reminds me, if you wanna live your healthiest life possible and cut through all that health misinformation that exists out there, make sure you hit that bell notification so that you can get notified of when my next video comes out. Cancer in general is being diagnosed at earlier ages compared to previous generations. Cancer has a genetic basis, but for most types of cancers, it's also a result of environmental exposures causing mutations in DNA. This is known as cancer initiation, which likely occurs in each of our cells every day, but the immune system fixes those mutated cells before they wreak havoc. In other words, before cancer promotion occurs, which is the real issue because that's how cancer spreads and grows. There are certain things that you put in your body that are actually feeding those mutated cells what they need to thrive, and I'll get into what those are in just a little bit. As we've eaten less healthy over the last few decades, the incidence of obesity-related cancers, including colon cancer, has continued to rise for people in the 30 to the 50 age bracket. For example, let's look at sugar and focus in on the worst sugar that you can put in your body, high fructose corn syrup, which was introduced to the masses back in the 1970s. So high fructose corn syrup actually consists of two types of sugar molecules, glucose and fructose, and it's in a mixture of a 50-50 ratio. We know that sugar, whether it's glucose or fructose, is eventually transformed into other molecules that supply the backbone for the structural elements that allow the cancer cell to divide and multiply. For example, ribose, lipids, and amino acids. And just like with diabetes and high blood pressure and high cholesterol, the more sugar that is consumed, the higher the risk of developing cancer. When you eat too much sugar, there's three important biochemical reactions that happen at the same time. For one, PI3 kinase enzyme is revved up, two, AMP kinase enzyme activity is turned off, and three, the enzyme mTOR is less inhibited. Uh -huh. Now, unless you're familiar with these enzymes and how they work, it's hard to grasp how these complicated metabolic pathways work, but just know that the combination of the three that I just mentioned, that's what drives cell growth, and that's what sets people up for cancer. How much is too much sugar? Ideally, you don't wanna eat more than 25 grams of added sugar per day. Refined carbs are also a problem. Basically, any food that has flour, so things like bread, pizza, pasta, tortilla wraps, cereal, bagels, chips, crackers, pastries, pancakes, waffles. Flour comes from the endosperm part of the original wheat kernel. When that wheat is processed in that milling process, they remove the two healthiest parts of that wheat kernel, the germ, which contains lots of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And more importantly, they remove the bran, which contains insoluble fiber. Flour is starch, which actually comes in two forms, amylose and amylopectin. Both starch molecules are nothing more than glucose molecules strung together. The difference is that amylose is a single chain and amylopectin is a branched chain. Ideally, you wanna eat foods that have more of the amylose and less of those that contain amylopectin because amylose takes longer to break down, takes longer to digest, and therefore you end up with a slower absorption of those glucose molecules, which means a lower and slower insulin response from the pancreas. So always go with the foods that contain the amylose. In general, foods that contain more of the amylopectin as their main starch are things like white bread, short grain rice, so for example, white rice, basmati rice, yellow rice, bagels, white potatoes, instant oatmeal, corn flakes, rice flakes. 
In general, foods that contain more of the amylose as the main starch are the brown types of foods. So long grain rice, the wild rice, wheat, rolled oats, quinoa, sweet potatoes, legumes like beans, peas, chickpeas, and lentils, amaranth, barley, rye, and buckwheat. Eating excess sugar and or refined carbohydrates leads to more insulin release from the pancreas. And when this happens day in and day out, people start becoming insulin resistant and eventually they develop type two diabetes. We know that the risk factors for colon cancer include insulin resistance and type two diabetes. So what does insulin have to do with colon cancer? Insulin is an important growth factor for colonic mucosal cells and the higher your insulin levels, especially over longer periods of time, the higher potential for them to stimulate the growth of tumor cells. In fact, blood levels of insulin-like growth factor one and IGF binding protein three were reported to have an increased risk of colorectal cancer in a cohort of almost 15,000 males. This is why cancer centers like Memorial Sloan Kettering, that's in New York, and then MD Anderson in Houston have been experimenting with diets that are high in fiber and low in sugar. What about the worst thing that you can possibly eat? Trans fat. Are you secretly eating them without even knowing it? And can it lead to cancer? Trans fats are very low in real food, but you can inadvertently make them right on your stovetop. Let's say you cook with an unsaturated fat like olive oil, which is healthy, right? But if that olive oil is heated past its smoking point, which is around 350 degrees Fahrenheit, guess what happens? That olive oil molecule is easily converted from a cis to a trans fat. There is a 2019 study that fried some falafel and canola oil at very high temperatures and then mix that oil into rat feed. The rats that were fed the fried canola oil diets, they had a higher incidence of gut inflammation and colon tumors compared to the rats who ate canola oil that was cooked at the lower temperatures. Just know that the different unsaturated fats have different smoking points and be aware of the smoking point of the oil that you're cooking with. It is well known that PAHs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are found in coal and gasoline, cause cancer by binding to DNA bases, generating oxygen radicals, which lead to cellular mutations. So PAHs from vehicle exhaust, they promote lung disease and various cancers, but barbecuing or smoking your meat can also lead to PAH formation, which is how they make their way down into your colon. Recent studies show that charcoal briquettes generate PAHs released into the air, even without meat on the grill, unless propane is being used. And things get even worse with charred grilling meat, which has been proven to lead to DNA mutations and cancer. Char grilling vegetables also causes PAH formation, but generates less PAHs compared with meat. Regardless, more grilling means more risk. Is the meat you're eating processed or unprocessed? It's estimated that for every 50 grams of processed meat consumed per day, the risk of colorectal cancer goes up by about 16%. Long-term consumption of processed meats is strongly correlated with an increased risk of colon cancer, especially for left-sided tumors, mainly because processed meats contain nitrates and nitrites. Nitrates and nitrites are the preservatives in cured meats like bacon, salami, sausages, pepperoni, and hot dogs. They prolong a food's shelf life and give it an attractive hue, but here's the problem. Nitrates turn into nitrites, which react with amino acids to form nitrosamines, which then react with nitrogen to form nitrosoureas. Nitrosoureas are among the most potent carcinogens in existence and are associated with virtually every cancer of the GI tract, not just the colon. This is why nitrates and nitrites are classified as group one carcinogens, placing these foods in the same risk category for cancer as cigarettes, alcohol, and asbestos. And now to the most important thing that you should be putting in your body that 99% of people don't consume enough of, that's fiber, especially the insoluble fiber. Most people on average, they're consuming 10 to 15 grams of fiber per day, but the ideal is 30 grams per day. Why is fiber so important when it comes to preventing colon cancer? Insoluble fiber acts as a mild abrasive in the lumen of the colon, which dislodges and sloughs off those old dead cells, which are the cells that initially become precancerous. So basically the insoluble fiber sweeps away those precancerous cells, reducing the cancer risk. Insoluble fiber also combines with soluble fiber to form a gel on the inside of the intestine, specifically in the duodenum, which reduces intestinal absorption by 25%, which helps to keep those insulin levels low. Just know that 99% of the bread you see at the grocery store claims to have a lot of fiber, but that's soluble fiber that they add back to it 
after the wheat has been processed. You can't add back the inside of fiber. The brand part of the original wheat kernel, it's gone forever once they process it. An example of unprocessed bread would be something like Ezekiel bread, which has to be kept refrigerated to keep it from spoiling. And if you wanna go the extra mile, intermittent fasting is something else that you can do to help reduce your risk. This is because fasting allows cells in your body, including your colonic mucosal cells, to undergo autophagy and mitophagy, which is another way of saying the cell repairs itself. This includes repairing DNA mutations that occur every day. It's a way of nipping those precancerous cells in the bud. So even though there's some risk factors for colon cancer that are out of your control, like genetics and age, there are some that are in your control. This includes staying away from tobacco and alcohol, now in terms of food, it's avoiding excess sugar, refined carbohydrates, trans fats, PAHs, and nitrates and nitrites from those processed meats, as well as eating plenty of soluble and insoluble fiber. Throw in intermittent fasting to make for a happy colon. And if intermittent fasting is something that you want to get started with, you should definitely check out my complete beginner's guide right here.